Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, it's me GamerTorq and damn, we got some Sonic news from E3 in the last couple of days. We got a full gameplay footage featuring modern Sonic's Park Avenue, classic Sonic's first boss battle with a twist at the end, and custom characters Green Hill Zone like stage, and shortly after, we received a brand new E3 trailer with incredible news. Well, you can see the highlight on the screen right now. You can click on the icon on the upper right corner to watch these, but in this video I will be talking about both videos, analyzing them and afterwards giving my opinion about them. If you are expecting random nonsense like watching the trailer and just screaming or as people who do it call it as reactions, you will have to look somewhere else. I am not here to waste your time with the over the top nonsensical screaming. So let's start with the E3 gameplay footage provided by IGN in full 1080p and 60fps. As Game Explain also mentions, the PlayStation version of Sonic Forces runs at a solid 60 frames per second. We're not sure if the base PlayStation 4 runs at 60fps as well, considering E3 has PS Pros available, but I think it is safe to assume that it does. Same assumption goes for all Xbox One models as well. Meanwhile, Game Explain mentions that Switch is a couple of steps behind, only running a 30 frames per second version of the game, making it feel slightly more sluggish if you jump from the PlayStation version to the Switch version. I don't think it is gonna be a huge issue if you only played on the Switch though. Their experience seemed more like due to the Switch from the PlayStation 4 version to the Switch version. But let's start with the trailer. The footage starts with Modern Sonic and again it is the Park Avenue we have been seeing for a while. But this time we can actually see other characters chatting with Sonic over the radio. And these characters include the likes of Vector. Charmy and even Silver with Sonic mentioning he will find Shadow in no time, so it seems like we are searching for Shadow in Park Avenue. As we come to the section where the initial footage from a while ago was cut off, we get to see Knuckles joining in on the frequency, talking about there being too many death egg robots along with Vector. Then we get to see the next area for the first time as Sonic lands in a main square and goes through a loop the loop making the transition from 3D to 2D pretty smooth where Amy joins the radio and tells us that Shadow has been sighted. I am especially happy with the timing of this radio since it is a vital information for the story and it is presented to us during the loop the loop transitioning so we don't actually have any gameplay elements to concentrate on at that specific moment. Then we get some very traditional 2D modern Sonic platforming sections with platforms, bumpers and poles you can jump on along with a beautiful rail transitioning to the next 2D section. Where we get to see Sonic do a double jump, so it seems like the double jump from Sonic Colors is a returning element as well along with tons of other recurring elements and characters. The footage is abruptly cut off as we approach what is possibly the last section of the stage I mentioned earlier that we would possibly meet Shadow at the end of this stage and thanks to Matt, the owner of Tails channel, sharing a photo from the end of the stage proving that Shadow is indeed waiting for us at the end of the stage, but he might not be there as a friend, which I will get back to once we talk about the E3 trailer after the gameplay section. IGN's gameplay footage continues with classic Sonic in a boss fight against Eggman that has a twist towards the end. It is in the full-on Green Hill Zone without any industrial parts as we will see later on in the next section, but the waterfalls are still flowing with sand instead of water, similar to everything else we've been seeing so far. The boss battle starts off as the iconic Sonic 1 boss fight, Eggmobile with a chainsaw instead of the usual ball, and I really have to give props to Sonic team here with the attention to detail. In the previous footage analysis video I have mentioned that the art style is a little bit more simplistic than the games like Unleashed or Generations, but that didn't stop Sonic Team from giving it care, attention and the detail it needed. Just look at the way the chainsaw swipes from left to right, you can feel the weight of the chainsaw and the way it follows what should be its natural motion rather than just being a simple pendulum like the ball it was in the previous games. Also, pay attention to the times when the chainsaw makes contact with the platforms and the sparkles it creates. I really appreciate them adding these small details. Also, the grass looks absolutely beautiful. Pay attention to the dialogue here as well. It starts with a small banter between Eggman and Tails and I have to say, it's a funny little dialogue here. A much better and natural attempt at comedy 
than the horrible attempts in the last couple of games, so I hope this banter is indicative of how the comedy aspect will be handled in the game. Such power exceeds even my expectations! My own genius scares me sometimes! That means you miscalculated! That's a failure in my book! <laughs> to surpass expectations is the ultimate of genius! I wouldn't expect you to understand. I do not need to hear Tails building a supercomputer out of detergent and dishwashers. That was that was not comedy. That was just random nonsense. Well, this here is a nice little jab at Eggman without feeling forced or idiotic. And have a look at the Tails that is speaking right now. It is the modern version of Tails, and this is a classic stage. So it is fair to assume that only classic character in Forces will be the classic Sonic. We also see something interesting during this boss fight. Usually when Sonic gets hit, Sonic himself drops the rings and they are scattered onto the stage for you to recollect them again. But when Sonic gets hit in this video, the rings drop from the ring counter in the UI and do not scatter around the map so you can't possibly recollect the rings. That adds a whole new aspect and difficulty even to the easiest of boss battles since you are left with only one second chance. The idea that Classic Sonic is the only classic character in the game is also reinforced by the next piece of dialogue. But before that, we beat the boss, or at least that's what Sonic Team wants you to think, as the battle transitions into an Egg Dragoon fight immediately. Now, I am not exactly sure how to feel about this. Egg Dragoon has been Eggman's trump card in Unleashed and second to last plan in Sonic Generations. And this fight right here feels like it is undermining both games and Egg Dragoon itself. Though, that is my only complaint here as it is a fairly nice twist and still a simple fight fitting to the first boss battle for Classic Sonic. But coming back to the previous argument, Eggman with his next dialogue specifically mentions that Classic Sonic is not the past version of Sonic, but simply a pint-sized Sonic from another dimension. Now, this is pretty interesting since 6 years ago when Generations was released, it was essentially the confirmation that Classic Sonic was the younger version of Modern Sonic despite both being technically the same age. This dialogue in Forces directly retcons that and splits Sonic continuity into two, a dimension with Classic Sonic and another one with Modern, which I believe might be a sign of good things to come, but I can easily make a whole nother video on that and its implications alone, so I'll leave that to rest for now. Back to gameplay, Classic just throws back the rocks at Egg Dragoon to defeat it pl plain and simple. We also see Classic using his drop dash during the Egg Dragoon fight and the fact that it is really in forces has been confirmed by Aaron Weber during his time on the IGN coverage as well. At the end of the fight, we hear Eggman saying that he will take care of the whole resistance eventually and I'm glad to hear that other characters are actually doing something useful in the world as opposed to just cheering Sonic on. Afterwards, for the first time, we get to hear the results screen music for Sonic Forces, which is a variation of the main theme of course. Yes, Next up, we see our hub world, or more like the hub map for the first time. Nothing too special here, all stages are categorized into Sonic stage, which is the modern stage, classic stage, which features classic Sonic stage, and avatar stage, which features Bob. Yes, my, my OC is Bob. Bottom of the screen, we see the menu for world map, which is what is selected at this point, but also an avatar menu, presumably where you customize your avatar, and the mission menu, possibly featuring optional challenge acts, either similar to adventures and heroes, putting you through the same act with requirements, or like generations, featuring stages with same visuals but readjusted to fit certain gimmicks. In addition to these, while we are most certainly not getting a full online race mode, Aaron Weber mentioned that certain online functionalities will be available in the game, which leads me to believe online leaderboards and hopefully the online minigames like the 30 second flag post challenge makes a return from generations. As the footage continues, the moment we select the avatar stage, it takes us to the Wispawn menu. Wispawns are the weapons the avatar can utilize. Depending on 
which respawn you pick, you will be able to utilize its respective wisp power up in the stage. You cannot hoard every single wisp power. And I believe this is a sign that power up wisps won't be returning to Sonic stages, which, which I like a lot. Power up wisps were always used as a stopgap for a couple of seconds, completely changing the gameplay, while with Bob's wispons, they are an integral part of the game that do not take you away from the action. But we will see that in a second of course. Bob starts in a regular Green Hill Zone with a resistant soldier talking about the big machine in the background, which I think is a great time to mention the amazing dynamic backgrounds again. We have seen this time and time again on Modern's Park Avenue with the giant Death Egg robots, but that spider thing is actually there and will jump into the stage really really soon. This puts a lot of significance to the things you can see in the background. Whatever is in there can actually get incorporated into the stage at any time. Also interestingly, for a short bit, we see the pyramids in the background for a split second. This might just be a random element or as you will see when we talk about the E3 trailer itself, might actually be a reference to Sonic Adventure 2 where Eggman had his base inside the pyramids and people were freaking out that Egypt should have been way too far away from Station Square. Well, if this is actually a reference, then that means Pyramids in Sonic's world is not all that far away from everything else. But back to the actual gameplay, Bob plays like a generic platformer, just having Sonic elements around in the environment. He can't even jump into enemies since he doesn't curl up into a ball. Remember the last time that happened in a Sonic game? And knowing how some people will take this joke seriously, no, no. I am not serious, that, that was only a joke. But it is still an element showing Bob is a generic platformer hero, until we get to the end of the stage and he does badass stuff at least. Now, as mentioned in earlier analysis videos, this red wispawn uses burst wisp, either as a flamethrower to be used as a weapon or as a burst energy when jumping, similar to how it was utilized in Sonic Colors DS, only when you collect a burst wisp. During the stage, other characters are once again heard in the radio, but one thing stands out. As we enter the industrialized part of Green Hill Zone, very reminiscent of Planet Wisp, Silver mentions that we should, quote unquote, leave the chemical plant to them, which proves that chemical plant is in this world after all. We do not know if chemical plant will be a playable stage or not, but Forces is turning out more and more to be what generations should have been in the first place. And while some people are getting more and more frustrated because of nostalgia, I am really happy about this from a concept standpoint. The fact that this game is utilizing Sonic's history as a franchise thousand times better than Sonic Generations, the game that was supposed to do just that, makes me quite happy. At this point in stage, we also see Bob using his grappling hook and technically to homing attack on the enemies. This stage also features another vocal track to be the background music of another stage. Once again, when Bob gets hurt, he drops rings from the UI in a way that is impossible to recollect. And then the crab mech confronts us as mentioned by Knuckles trying to head into chemical plant possibly and we need to stop it. It is essentially a mini boss with sidestep sections. Bob needs to dodge a couple of pieces of the environment thrown at him and then time is jumped well so that he can get into this awesome action cutscene where he takes down the crab monster. And again, pay attention to the beautiful grass, just nobody can say this game doesn't look gorgeous. Sonic Team really paid attention to these details. And now that we are done with the gameplay footage, let's head over to the E3 trailer where the big reveal lies. 
we see a couple of scenes we have seen in the gameplay footage or the earlier trailers, so I'll be skipping a big portion of this section. When showcasing Bob, we see him go through the same stage, but this time with the Yellow Wisp on. Normally Yellow Wisp is the Drill Wisp, but in this case, it, it seems to be something that makes Bob zap around the place, killing all enemies, which leads me to assume it is a brand new Wisp rather than the Drill Wisp. We also get to see what seems to be the weapon attack of the yellow wisp on, which is a lasso slash whip type of attack that you can use, even if you don't have the yellow wisp energy. But now comes the big part. We see Shadow stepping in and a close up of him right afterwards, making us think he will be an ally in this shot alone. But then the camera pans and we get a close up of Metal Sonic, then over to Zavok from Sonic Lost World, then over to Chaos from Sonic Adventure. And before moving on, I have to mention the modern look of Chaos Zero, it is absolutely stunning. I mean, the last time we saw this guy was in Sonic Adventure 2's multiplayer and even then the technology and graphics were not great, but damn, Chaos Zero in 2017 looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, at this point, when the camera shows all four in the same shot, you might think, hmm... These are all characters that have had a quarrel with Eggman at one point or another, so maybe Eggman has gone truly crazy, so they are here as allies. Nope! Next up, we see the brand new villain of this game, a mysterious black anthro looking character named Infinite, who looks absolutely terrifying with an amazing and menacing design, with a red aura around him, creating mysterious black and red cubes and launching them all at us, ending the trailer right there, similar to how Silver's telekinesis powers work. And that brings us to the end of the analysis part of this video. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to let me know in the comments or with the push of a like button. Up next is all about my opinions. I'll be honest, I am still a little skeptical about the storytelling aspect of this game, but I am getting more and more hopeful with every single trailer or footage we see. The dialogue during stages seem to suggest that Sonic Team is really approaching the story with a lot of care and that is very important, especially when you have so many recurring places, heroes and villains, so they have really given me good vibes during E3 in that aspect. As for gameplay, keep in mind that I am not attending E3 and I can only comment on what I see in these videos or what I hear from other people who have experienced the game firsthand. And I have to say I am hyped. Modern Sonic looks like it plays beautifully. One gripe I have with him is the fact that the portion we saw with Park Avenue was dominantly 2D or simple hallways in 3D and that is sadly not my optimal Modern Sonic experience and I hope future stages expand upon the 3D both from a 3D to 2D ratio in stages as well as giving the 3D parts a more open feeling like in Generations. If they do that, I can easily see Forces becoming the definitive modern Sonic game. Uh, we didn't see much of Classic Sonic, at, at first I was a little troubled by Classic not being able to collect the rings back when getting hit, but then again the boss battle was so simple that it was a non-issue in the end. This might not be the case with future bosses though, so I am interested to see how that will be handled. Maybe during bosses Classic can drop less rings per hit, or maybe a skill shop like in Generations with a skill allowing us to drop rings when getting hit instead of insta-loss every single ring. As for Bob, the avatar character, I am not exactly sold on him. As I, as I mentioned throughout this video, he looks like a generic platformer stuck in a sonic environment doing his best at imitating the conditions of this universe. From the looks of it, his gameplay will be focused a lot more on platforming and spectacles like the Crab Mech fight, making you feel awesome without actually doing much. I'm totally fine with that since I love those types of spectacle games as long as his generic platformer gameplay does not drag on forever and it certainly didn't in Green Hill Zone so so far I have nothing to be scared about and I am incredibly hyped for this game. 
But what do you guys think about Sonic Forces so far? I'll be in the comments reading your thoughts and hoping to have a nice discussion with you there. If you enjoy what I do here, please consider checking my Patreon page. Supporting my channel there helps me create more content with better quality and will give you benefits on my channel as well. You can follow me on facebook.com slash gamertork and on twitter at gamertork95. Subscribe for more on Sonic and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.